Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer, and this is The Road to the Record, where I work to achieve mastery of 10 games and a hunt for the best score of the Decathlon. If you like what you see, remember to hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. Let the games begin. This is Motorsport Manager, Fire Fantasy Mod, Episode 3 in our F1 career mode. So, uh, that was your first full race weekend in charge of a Formula 1 team. How do you feel? Uh, I feel great. It was a wonderful weekend where we got slaughtered right at the back. Way, 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 uh, way off the pace. All right, car condition update. Uh, if you were watching the last episode and you watched it all the way to the end, you would have seen that I make I made unscheduled pit stops for both cars uh, late in the race and repaired parts. What it allowed to was that the part condition drop was very minimal because of the repairs that I did. So it's only gonna take 12 hours to get the car back to optimal condition and then allow us to focus our efforts on other things. And we were already as far down the grid as we could possibly get because of how far off the pace we are. So it had literally zero impact on the race outcome for us. Pit crew review, well, we had six pit stops. Uh, the fastest was five and a half seconds and that, that could be a lot better. Uh, but it could have been a lot worse. We did have one mistake though. Uh, so that had a lot to do with just the fact that the pit crew we have right now is just garbage. So I need a good pit crew and that's going to be the first place we go look as Max Verstappen win, uh, wins the season opener and he does so spinning out on the final couple corners and having a 10 second lead be closed down to a couple tenths at the finish line, but he still wins over Sebastian Vettel. Charles Leclerc could have won that race, especially with Verstappen's spin, but Ferrari did what Ferrari does best, and they pit him at an inopportune time, cost him the race, and he ended up down in, I don't know, fifth? Oh yeah, there you go. Now we've got some pit crew available, as this is very much what we needed, and this guy, oh my goodness, he is bloody brilliant. Yes, you were hired. At this point, I'm tempted to hire all of them because of how bad our crew is. And it seems that hiring them... Yeah, sign, okay, signing fee 5,000. So I'm going to lose 5,000 to eventually fire them, I believe. But, well, let's see. I'm not planning on, on firing any of these guys, but let's see what happens if we were to fire. Yeah, cost break contract, nothing. Okay, so it does cost me 500,000 to hire these guys, and that's something. That is something. Uh... So maybe, I don't know, maybe considering we're dealing with budget, right? We're dealing with the budget. Uh, it's it's 5,000. It's 5,000. That's, that's nothing. I will hire these guys, every one of them, because they are so far better. This is the one that I'm mainly looking at because this guy is not going to stay with the team for very long. However, he is so much better than what I have that it'll make a big impact on the upcoming race. Actually, we're still going to be at the back of the grid. I don't know why I bother spending that money. Uh, and not just going for these optimum guys. Uh, so you're going to be on tires, definitely. And there's the first one getting swapped out. And then you're going to be on the rear jack. Maybe I put this guy on the front jack and watch how much better our time gets. Not that great, actually. Maybe I should just take all four of them and put them on the tire changing. Wait, wait, wait. Where'd the other guy go? There they are. 
Yeah. 3.7, just like that. Bigger impact on the tires, so four new hires. This week, anyway, we'll all be doing the tires. That will not be their permanent positions, but this week. Now, from here, we have front and rear Jackman and your front. There's the rear. Most of these guys are going to end up getting fired, so I'm really not worried about longevity. And anybody fixing? No. Now, uh, let's see. You are just garbage, so uh, contract remaining. Not sure. Okay, good. Yes, fire. <laughs> these guys are a little bit better. I really don't want to put them back out there, though. I mean, like this guy, 65. That is not good. That was where the mistake came from. That's why it's so low already, his stamina. I'm firing him. Costs so little to hire and fire that uh, there's no point keeping these guys. There you go. Okay. Well, there's our pit crew now without any reserves whatsoever. Uh, but already we've, we've cut out, what, a second and a half? And, and they're better than Alpine. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Okay. All right. You got you to gotta get improvement where you can. And just like that, our pit crew is not the worst anymore. Our staff, our sponsors, not the worst. Headquarters, it's going to be a long time before that's not the worst. Drivers could and should be better drivers coming soon. Car repair finished. New stuff coming. Front wing. Oh, see, look at that there. That bottom line. That's the bottom line right there. The brakes. We haven't touched the brakes. But see, the bottom line's moving. It is definitely moving away from where it was. That was a front wing. That was a big step up. We've done a couple rear wings. Big step up. Suspension is the next quickest to be done. Let's go ahead and do a couple there. Uh, ouch. Ouch. Maybe we don't go that direction first. And maybe we go into the brakes or the gearbox. Same number of days. Twenty-five to max. That'll make a much better gearbox than what we have right now. Almost a million bucks though, but still. Okay, we'll make the adjustment here. We now have a second front wing that is better than the first, but it has to be worked on to actually get there. But that gives both cars a new front wing. That's something. Okay, now you guys are gonna be ready and actually at 89% you're in pretty decent shape already. What I need is the new rear wing front wing combo probably to get precedence right now. good. Look at sponsors later. Whoa, something just happened. What do we have? Lots of mail. Lots of mail. Okay, we have Academy drivers. 
Report on upcoming race. Dubai, 63 laps. That's a long one. Zero percent chance of rain. I can see that. Pierre Gasly accepted into Driver Academy. 54 weeks long. Marketability plus 10. Morale. Mechanical relationship. Chairman's happiness. Provability. Potential plus 6. And desired earnings. Interesting. Okay, this is a mod feature that is not in the game itself. Aitken. Jack Aitken. That, that could be a driver to look into. Quan Yu Shu. Charles Leclerc. Alisi. Gokari. Calm Lot. Joel Erickson. Fuoku. Could be a decent one. Mikel Jensen, I don't know. Uh, Yuichi. Nakayama. Sponsor friendly. Love doing ads. Marketability plus 25. Morale plus 25. But teammate morale is negative. Uh, chairman's happiness plus 25. Desired earnings plus half a mil. That's not good. Uh, so no. No, no, no. Yeah, no, we're not good. I know, I know. I know. Sky report finish. Esteban Ocon below average. I think the potential thing is different on how it works in this mod. Um, the drivers don't show that high end potential. It's got good focus, bad feedback. Pretty good marketability, and actually that's a pretty decent driver right there. Team player. That's something that'll make me happy. First lap hero. Early breaker. That's what brings him down from a 15 to a 13, but he is improving. About 2.5%. That's actually pretty good numbers. Meaning he is definitely going to get better. It's not his picture, but... Reserve driver could cost me about a million. But I think, I don't know, marketability 70%. That's a good number. It's a good number. But is that my first driver kind of number? I mean, I, I need somebody. And I'm not getting it right now. He's definitely better than Schumacher. Though Schumacher's got a higher marketability, but he wants a lot more money. But you can see how much half a star, really good potential. I don't know, if he signs for a small enough amount, he's going to be one of the best drivers out there. And I don't have much comparison right now, as I literally only have a list of five drivers right now, but... Let's see. Status isn't very important. Maybe I make him a number two. Oh, I don't really want him as a number two. Wages are important. That's not good. Uh, that is a lot of money that he wants. That's, that's worse than what? No. I can't afford half a million to race times two for the drivers. Uh, that is too much. We can't overcome that sponsorship-wise unless their marketability is insane. You know, if it's at or just about a, at 100%. Let me see who is making the least. Roy Nasadi. Not good under braking. Not smooth. 
Armstrong. I have no idea. That's a very wide range. Gunther, Max Gunther. Setting camera. Sorotkin. Sorotkin's got some talent. He does. And there's Deegan, who we're already scouting, right? Le yeah, 11 more days. Boshan. Boshan's a, a, a decent driver, but the feedback is guaranteed to be low there. Maybe we need to take a look at Sorokin, because that... That's a decent driver for us. He is with Manor. But he is not making much money. Ouch, 30 days. Dang, why? Why is that going to take so long? Alright. Moving forward a little bit. Gearbox finished in time before the race. Car getting better and better, but a lot of these parts aren't at that status. It's max upgrades, not current upgrades. So a lot of them are not going to be ready immediately. Let's look at a second gearbox. Ooh, there's a plus 30 right now. There's a plus 40 right now, but at the cost of reliability, which we could certainly recover. I mean, that puts us at 48. But it's another 10 on the acceleration. And look how big of a difference. I mean, that's essentially twice as good as what we have now. Let's do it. I can't afford too many new parts this year, so... There's definitely going to be a limit to what we can put onto the car. We're going to have to do a lot of just fixing up and trying to get the headquarters going, you know, build for the future. Try to not finish in last place. That is not a good deal. New gearbox. Definitely going on to car number one. The improved parts. What are we at? 79 on both of those. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. We'll keep at it over the race weekend and then we'll kind of shift our focus to the gearbox after that, but. Actually, here's the thing. Well, it really doesn't matter because, again, I still have two <laughs> garbage drivers at this point. I have not found a driver yet, and I really need to do so. But they also need a car that's drivable. And until we actually get a car that's drivable, it's okay that I have garbage, cheap drivers. But I need that for sponsors sooner rather than later. Uh, Money-wise, we're doing okay. Doing okay in that department as things stand right now. Now, this could be the same thing as last race where... In fact, I don't really think you need that many mediums. It's a longer race. And I don't need much for qualified, so let's just stick with that strategy. A 744. The next handful of races, that'll definitely be the case.
Okay, so we're heading to the desert, going to Dubai. With an oh yay, another track like Suzuka crossover in the middle of the track. Alright, so tire choice. We have uh, roughly 17 laps on the Ultras. Ooh, about 33 laps on supers and the mediums will definitely go the distance now that last race I'm trying to think where was when did I pit lap 16 right and then safety car for a couple laps to about 18 and then we pit at about 40 42 So 18 to 42 was only 24 laps, and they had about the same estimate. Now, I could have gotten a few more laps out of those tires before going off the cliff. At least a few. Maybe no, about... So really, it was only about 25, 26 laps was all I got on those tires. If we have a 63-lap race... I'm either looking at a two-stopper, you know, it really isn't going to matter because we're going to be so far off the pace. Maybe I do take the ultras and take a couple stops on those plus a stop. Well, no, not even that. That's going to give me about 17, 34, and about 33. Not much difference. But super is definitely the way to go for the most part. The mediums, well, they'll get me there. I mean, I'll get 40, 40 and 23. I could make a one-stopper work on mediums and super softs. But we will be really slow if we do that. So we'll, we'll try for the supers and see how many laps we can get out of them. And then have to go from there. On to practice. And we'll make quick work of this. I trying to get our setup going because we are really really bad at setup with these two drivers so race trim is all that matters each setup change takes longer so we are not going to get any qualifying trim bonus and we'll be lucky if we get level two on the race trim and on the tires and I doubt that that's going to happen at all Kind of a short version of the track here. Oh, nice handling spot on. That's good. But only 77%. Downforce is poor. Probably going to need to go higher. Speed balance. There are long straights here. Oh boy, this is going to be tricky. I would think I'd need it towards top speed, not towards acceleration. And if that's the case, the downforce should probably be towards low. I'm not going to bother adjusting the handling right now. I know where excellent is. I'm going to save the time and readjust that later. Because 15 seconds is a lot for one adjustment. Same boat here. Let's hope I go the right way. No, I don't think I did. I don't think I went the right way. So they're going to go opposite directions. One going to one extreme, one going to the other. Nobody using supers again. Ooh, waste my time. Yes, I was right. I went. Very much the wrong way here. 54%. Ouch. Alright, we were there, and that was poor, so that's a bit poor. And we were... Speed balance was... 
poor at the B, so we need to go all the way over to like the S or the P. We'll try it from there. And I'm not worried about the handling just yet. Again with the I will save the time and effort. I know where the happy zone is on that. I just gotta get back and find it. 90% that was <laughs> much better. Speed, poor to good. That's actually still probably not enough. That should be closer. Okay, three greats, 95, I know where one excellent is. Nice, right on the money on that one. Now the tricky part is the speed balance. Do I want to try to push my luck? I'm already at 95. Uh, I'm going to take the speed balance as it is. Six. Again, the handling just needs to get locked back in. And I'm in the middle of the D. Nope, oh, 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 that's gear ratios I want. Stiffness there, and we're going to go just a little bit more. So we're just going to let him run for a little while, get that first bonus at, at least, and then maybe bring him in one more time to check. Well, we should be pretty close. It's like we're going to be in a similar fuel wear and tire wear situation as we were last time. Actually, we're getting ever so slightly hot. It looks like it's going to take quite a few laps to overheat. this time. Okay, yeah, two purples and a green, 98%. I'm happy with that. Let's get you back out there and yeah, working on those bonuses. Alright, so we'll go ahead and ride with Kubel and we'll bring in Kubel soon. 10 minutes to go in the session. Finally, level 1 bonus. Took us 15 minutes to get that. And that was 9 seconds off the pace on that lap. 8 seconds that time. That's not as bad as last time, is it? Maybe. 99. I like it. Oh, I only set you up for six laps, not twelve. That's not good. Ah, the laps take long enough, that's okay.
took about five or six laps to hit the just about overheating range. So we will have to monitor that a bit in the race. Not quite level two. Not quite level two. I need <laughs> I need a decent driver. I mean just one. Just one will make a world of difference for this team. Especially as the car closes in on the back of the grid, the driver will make a really big difference on that. Alright, well we're going to do what we did last time out. We are so far off the pace that it really does not matter what we do. We are going to get absolutely hammered in this department. So. I'm going to send them out quickly, send them on auto, send the other driver out quickly, and put them on auto as well. Not what I will do normally, but definitely what I will do for now, because guaranteed we are going to be at the back of the grid by many, many seconds over everyone else. It's just going to be how quickly we can close the gap. Well, we're eight seconds down to the leader. Last time we were, what, like 9 and 10 seconds down? So are we a little bit better? I don't know. We're still 4 seconds slower than Stoffel Van Dorn, who is the next worst to where we are now. So we've got a long way still to go. But I feel like we clawed back another second on everybody else with the new parts that we put on the car in the last 10 days. And if just a handful of new parts that aren't even optimized can make that big of a jump in the gap, we will get there before the end of the season where we can start beating these guys out. The big question is whether I can at least rely on some other teams still not being in the top 10 throughout the season, and if we can beat them out in enough races to be considered... 11th best and not get relegated because that is the big concern Battle fastest in Q1 We were of course eliminated at the back of the grid. So we're gonna do a quick sim and away we go Stappen goes quick as step first, but the, the two Mercedes overtake them quickly followed by the Ferraris followed by the Red Bulls and Renaults Round out your top eight Mod seems to take the approach that real life figured would happen this year, that Reno was going to be a comfortable fourth, and then the midfield battle would really begin at five. Reno really hasn't had that for the most part this season, in real life anyway. Hamilton goes fastest in Q2. And it's Vettel who's going to be on pole over Valtteri Bottas and then Hamilton on the second row with Leclerc. All of those guys within two tenths of a second at the top three. Verstappen nearly beats out Leclerc and Gasly not a distant sixth, only not even a tenth of a second down on Verstappen. While in real life there tends to be a significant three to four tenth gap between them regularly uh, and seems to be with Verstappen only just being comfortable ahead of the midfield Gasly keeps finding himself around 8th, ninth, 10th and racing there objective 19th or above achievable only with help we need DNFs, but this mod is certainly capable of providing us that kind of support. Big question is, can we get one or both drivers far enough down the line to get ahead of another team? Because technically in the last race, we were at the back. 
Alright, well, we're gonna go race in here. Five red lights are up and out, and you see just how slow we are. Remember, Seuss last time had an amazing start to the race, got up into the top ten, and then just started falling back. Now, Seuss has the better of the two cars, so let's see if Seuss can overtake Kubel. Both drivers seem to be on form right now, maybe because the car was so much faster than it was last race. Uh, by the way, we're on the ultra soft. I didn't even bother changing the tire. That's not the wisest thing of me to have done. Uh, but we'll see if that helps us keep pace at all with George Russell in 22nd. Not so much. Our drivers are definitely close, but here's the battle in the backfield ahead. And they are definitely battling at the end of the first lap. We're going to go quickly, though, through the races because really this all comes down to DNFs and nothing else. We'll kind of focus in on those, as you can see, my both both of my drivers are well adrift and the, the front of the field slowly starting to spread out and find some gaps between each other. Uh, Russell with a lock up there, Stroll getting a penalty, Perez is pitting, Russell and Stroll each have penalties, Perez having to fix parts, uh, Russell's it's a drive through penalty for him, so he's going to be heading here shortly to pit road. Gonna have to come in and out. Gasly just locked up. We go Russell through pit lane, and there we go. Both cars on ahead for now. We are not in last place for the time being. Uh, Kubel and Seuss apparently have been battling with each other. Seuss had passed Kubel. Kubel passed Seuss back by, and here comes George Russell. Ready to make a move, and oof, that was used right on the straightaway. Perez still further down, but Perez had parts to fix, likely a wing. 58 laps remain. Tire temperature slowly coming up, and they're into a happy zone. 75% on the wear already through six laps, but we're going to speed things up, go a little bit faster, because. We are clearly off pace already, three quarters of a minute behind, and there goes Perez. And Perez now making a move for 22nd around Kubel. And yeah, even after that pit stop and after fixing the part, we are already last place. Not lapped yet, we've made it nine laps. Now on to lap number 10, but the lapping is soon to commence and there goes the Ferrari of Charles Leclerc who's in the race lead over Botas, Verstappen, Sainz, Vettel and Hamilton so very different order than what we saw at the start grid. Stroll has overtaken Kubica and Jean-Eric Verne to go 15th but on ultra soft tires that are not going to last much longer and they've pushed a lot harder than I have so 13 now 14 laps in I'm going to be Hitting pretty soon here, 39%, and actually both cars are starting to uh, get a bit hot on those tires, so we're going to have to slow down even more, and here comes the uh, midfield. First stops are already happening. i got to think about stopping soon. There you go, more tires. Lap 16, who to go with first? Well, Kubel's further ahead, so uh, I'm going to stay out a little bit longer. Pace really doesn't matter. We'll see how bad the pace is. That's not so bad yet. 26% though, that's starting to get bad. So let's go ahead and bring you in. So how many laps? 18, but we're not on 18. We've already been lapped, so we're on lap 16 at the moment. How close to the start-finish line are we? Oh, we've still got quite a ways to go. So 16 laps is all we've gone on these tires. That's three below what they're supposed to do, which means we're probably only going to get 30-something here, but two sets of super softs will get us to the end. Another 16? I'm not sure if that gets us there. However, the leader, right? I mean, I was five laps down last race. Really, I'm only looking at maybe 57, 56 laps even, shorter track.
All right, super sauce. Hit stops are going to be almost two seconds faster. Why don't you give me a good in-lap attack? You're going to push, not come in until the following lap. There we go, Kubel into the pits. It's a good stop. Alright, so we ride on board with Seuss, who inherits 23rd after Kubel's stop. Let's see where Seuss comes out. To push it on this lap. That's it, we speed it up till we get to pit lane. There you go. And Seuss enters. Good stop. Quick stop. Four flat. So much better than where we were. Again, our, our pit crew is improved now to the point where they are not last anymore. They're 11th. Okay, so it's lap 20. Leclerc in the lead. But most of the other top cars have all stopped already, and Leclerc has not. Leclerc does have a pretty healthy lead. Botas, though, looks like they could take the lead after whatever upcoming pit stop. So a little red with Leclerc. Until that time, we'll slow down when they head into the pits, which is right now. Claire in pit lane. Let's see. Botas. Botas coming down the straight. And Botas takes over the race lead from Charles Leclerc. Leclerc out three seconds behind. Seuss is in between them, but Seuss will, of course, get out of the way. Not hinder that battle. Couldn't hinder it even if we wanted to. First happen. 15 and a half seconds down. Norris has not pit yet. Alonzo, a handful of other cars have not pit yet. And we go fast for the time being. And let's go ahead and run on board with race leader Valtteri Bottas. I mentioned this in the last episode. I'll mention it again. As we do get competitive, which we're not right now, we are so far off pace, we're 100 seconds down on Stoffel Van Dorn. He hasn't even pit yet, but <laughs> we're 100 seconds down on Stoffel Van Dorn in the next worst car. And 26 laps into the this race, there are no DNFs. This is really bad for me. Uh, Ricardo was under investigation there momentarily, but was cleared. No penalty given. I'm in a bit of trouble unless some cars DNF. And none have done that nearly halfway through this race. Uh, Leclerc, drive through penalty, causing a collision. Collision, the second place driver while lapping someone. Possibly? Who is he lapped? Russell? Look at the mini map. It's either Verstappen or Russell. Maybe it was for Sepp and then he just pulled away. Perez collides with Seuss. Perez with a penalty and problems. Seuss hit in the gearbox. It's down to 40%. Driver mistake, locked up. Lap 35, and we are very much at the back and well down, well over 100 seconds behind Sergio Perez now, despite the penalty and problem the damage that had to be repaired. Three pit stops already for Perez, multiple, multiple mistakes on the day, and yet we're still 130 seconds behind. Uh, Seuss spun there real quick, I don't know if you saw that in super speed, but Seuss did have a quick spin and was able to resume racing right away. Lap 40.
I think we can make it 18 laps. So if we can get to 45 before we pit, we can come out on ultras with that last pit stop. And we could probably do those car repairs as I'm so far down. And again, the only thing that's going to move me up is anybody DNFing. I'm more than a lap behind Van Dorn. In fact, I'm almost 200 seconds now down. So I've got n no chance there. We're down to 30% here. And yes, it is lap 45. So uh, Zeus a bit more ward than Kubel now. So we're going to use Seuss to go first on the next pit stop. And 26% is low enough. Let's go ahead and put on the ultras. And we will fix some parts. Not everything. Stop ongoing. Mistake on the rear left. Still in the pits. We're 96 seconds there. Now Kubel can come in. Take the three lowest. Fix those. We'll do the same thing. So a mistake on the tires. That's not good. But we're trying to play the long game here. This pit stop looks good so far. We lose another 100 seconds, but uh, it's okay. So that was only 71.6, so there should be a pretty big gap between them now, and there is about a half minute between the two drivers. 52 laps in. Valtteri Botas leads. He's had two stops. He's on ultras now, and those will probably make it the distance. It's Verstappen in second, but Verstappen just pit and came out still in second. But Hamilton comes out battling and Vettel. So here we go. We've got a we've got a battle on with just a handful of laps to go. So Max Verstappen in second place. It's now Sebastian Vettel just behind. Hamilton was coming up quick on Verstappen as he came out of the pits, but it looks like Verstappen blocked Hamilton, which he had to check up and Vettel got around. Speaking of, of course, the, the thought on everybody's mind, the conversation uh, of late after the Canadian Grand Prix is what happened between Vettel and Hamilton. Now, Vettel leading the whole race virtually Hamilton in second pretty much the entire race, but Hamilton had been about five seconds down most of the race. Time goes on, we get down to it, we're going to go a little bit faster here as we continue to follow this battle, it's about just a little bit, maybe we'll go from the middle ground with Vettel so we can kind of keep an eye in front and behind him. Verstappen looks to be pulling away on the fresh tires, Vettel's on some pretty worn ultra softs, and actually so is Botas, but Botas has a 35 second lead right now and looks to be cruising unless he pits. Still a handful of laps to go, so it could happen, and here we go, they are all bunched up and it's my cars that they're bunched behind. We got a yellow flag in sector two, but nothing of it, everybody's still running out on track, and Vettel has pit. Vettel has a problem, was it because of that? His tires were completely gone. So yeah, I think he flat spotted his tires there and Vettel down to P10 with just a few laps to go. So it's Verstappen in P2. Now it's Leclerc in P3 who caught up and joined the mix and it's Hamilton in P4. So we're right back to a Ferrari right in the middle. It's just, it's not Vettel any longer. Hamilton continues to slide backwards. He is on the super softs instead of the ultras, which Everybody else is using the ultras. My tires uh, are overheated. There's only a few laps to go, so I don't think it's going to matter. Uh, I could push the fuel, but also doesn't matter. It will hurt the 
park condition and I'd rather keep that down to a minimum so we'll just kind of cruise through so very much last place Botas has a penalty how did that happen Botas gets a penalty for causing a collision the race leader so this is like what happened with Ocon last season and we'll come back to Vettel and Hamilton here in a second last season in Brazil Verstappen the race leader Ocon a lap down, but because he had just pit, he's got fresh tires on and he's got pace. Verstappen didn't have much pace at that time and his tires were worn. Ocon was faster than Verstappen. Ocon tried to pass Verstappen, had him pretty much passed, but Verstappen was like, you're going to pass me? I don't think so. And he held out. Now Botas, meanwhile, is still in the race lead eight seconds and cruising towards the race win here in the final moments. It's the final lap. Coming around, he'll be taking the checker. Flag, no! Botas goes wide. Botas goes wide. Botas goes wide. Here comes Verstappen. Here comes Verstappen. And Verstappen, oh, 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 oh. Right behind him. Side by side for the finish. Somehow, Botas, two huge mistakes, still wins the race. And that is the second race in a row. Last time, it was Verstappen himself who did it. Hamilton drops all the way to third place, but actually comes up with everything happening around him. Leclerc in fourth. His ultra is used, so he got slow. Gasly in fifth. Sainz in sixth. Ricardo going to cross the line here in seventh place. That'll back up to eighth from tenth. Norris, ninth, and Raikkonen is going to round out the points in tenth place. Wow, that was crazy. Uh, we still end up at the very, very back. Well, well, well down. Uh, we did spend time fixing parts again, but that was, what, 70 to 90 seconds? Shave that time off, and we're still looking at 430 down compared to 190. So we're still 240 seconds down on our closest rival. But it wasn't 400 seconds down on our closest rival or 300 seconds, so... We are closing the gap, and it's only a couple races into the season, but it is ugly. Uh, anyway, that would have been Verstappen getting a penalty for taking out Ocon, uh, which was very much his fault, though Ocon got the brunt of it because he was a lap down. Uh, but wrapping up real quick, Vettel, Hamilton, Vettel misses his breaking point under pressure from Hamilton with just a handful of laps left in the race, about 20. He should have lost the race late. Hamilton had him because he was off on the grass, uh, struggling to get back on to the circuit after the chicane. Hamilton should have easily gone past him and, and taken the race lead. Vettel should have rejoined the racing, uh, off the racing line, rejoined the track, regained control of the car, resumed racing, and tried to have a shot from second place to see if he could beat Hamilton. Instead, he regains control of the car on the grass and immediately puts the pedal to the metal, puts the accelerator as far as it'll go while he's still on the grass, trying to desperately keep Hamilton behind him. You could see, you know, the race tel telemetry was available to the FIA. The It was also visible on the replay. He accelerated on the grass, which caused him to have a second wobble. And it shot him across the track onto the racing line right in front of Hamilton as Hamilton was in, you know, on the verge of flying by. And he had much more momentum and had a good exit. Didn't have any grass on his tires. And Hamilton had to slam on the brakes, get off, you know, get off the gas, check out of it, and Vettel was able to stay in front. Vettel ended up with a five-second penalty. Hamilton won the race through that, robbed everybody of a great race. They blamed the penalty for that. The penalty was Vettel's fault. It was Vettel's fault, not Hamilton. And I know that's not a very popular opinion out there. But it was Vettel who had regained control of the car. And instead of doing the safe thing, and instead of following the rules, and instead of accepting that in that moment, he 
messed up, made yet another mistake, taking second, and then fighting for the win. He ruined everybody's day by flooring it while still on the grass to desperately stay ahead. He had cut the corner already as it was. So no matter what he does in that case, he's going to have to cede that position. Doesn't do it. Blocks Hamilton and ruins everybody's day. He doesn't get his race win because of the penalty. Hamilton doesn't get to win the proper way. And really what it comes down to is Vettel made another mistake. And this time kind of gets away for it, from it because he then goes on to make additional mistakes after the race with his antics. And a lot of people applauded him for it. And I no, can't can't say I support it. But if you're still listening, thanks for tuning in. I'm Decathlon Gamer. This is the road of the record. We're two races in. We're super slow. We are way off the pace. Will we get there? Is there still a chance? Yeah, we'll see. Only time will tell. We ended up six and seven laps down. It was ugly. One of those laps, of course, attributed to repairing parts late on in that final pit stop. But still, way, away, away behind. We got work to do. We'll see if we can get it done. Two new drivers will make a big difference, though, when it comes, when it happens. That's it for this episode. Bye for now.